Hey everybody, what's going on? Giggs here with Awaken Chaos Era. I thought it might be nice if I shared with you 10 tips that I've picked up in my time playing this game, which hasn't been a, a, a super long time. I think I'm on, yeah, I'm on my 19th login day. So we've been playing the game for a little bit now, a couple weeks, almost three weeks now. And I've, I've picked up some things that uh, I think might be helpful to some of the newer players coming in. The game is still fairly new. Everybody's kind of getting their bearings. And uh, I, I know that there's going to be a lot more new players coming in. So if you're one of those players, hopefully there's something in this video that's going to help you. So I'm going to share with you 10 things that I think will save you a little bit of grief, hopefully keep you from making any mistakes, things of that nature. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, the first tip I want to talk about is over here, you'll see you have this foodies guide. This is a great way to kind of chart your progression through the game. You'll start on stage one and... There's 50 missions and you just go through them. The important thing to do is to come in here when you're brand new and kind of look ahead a little bit because a lot of them are not retroactive. So for example, you're gonna see, where is it? You're gonna see, we'll come up on it any second now. Advanced summon, complete advanced summon 10 times. You're gonna see this quite a few times uh, across these missions. I think I've seen it I don't know, three or four times at this point, and I'm on number 18 in my second stage. So you're gonna see it a few times. See, here it is again at 48. And the game is fairly generous with shards when you're new, but the longer you play, the less it the less it does that, right? So it's a good idea to hang on to them until you get to that mission because it's not retroactive. And I believe that somewhere around here, I used about, I don't know, 60 or 70. <laughs> shards and then i got to this one and i was like oh it's not retroactive i didn't even know it was coming because i wasn't looking ahead so come into your foodies guide look ahead a little bit try to plan accordingly because most of these are not retroactive the next tip i want to give you and this is this is the cardinal sin in all of these games but but inevitably there will always be someone in the chat or a discord or somewhere saying ah oh, i didn't I've, i fed this champ i didn't know this champ was good uh, you, you know, we'll find out an epic is actually part of the meta and there will inevitably be tons of people going, oh, I fed that champ when I was new. I didn't know I used them as a chicken. Don't feed epics, legend, don't, don't ever feed epics or legendaries as chickens until you're so sure or until you have so many copies of one that you're not going to feel the effect. You never know when a champ's going to get buffed. You never know when new content's going to come out that's going to change. And especially if you're new to a game, you don't even know who's who's good and who's not yet, right? You're, you're trying to figure out all the champs, figure out all the metas, figure out all the things. And just because someone hasn't figured something out yet doesn't mean a champ is not good. So I, I think most champs de deserve a fair shot. So just be real careful. Don't feed epics or legendaries unless you're using them for ascensions for a copy, right? And then even be careful with elites. Rares and uncommons... Are fine. Those are not that hard to get. You're going to get tons of blue shards. You'll you'll be able to pull those should you decide you need one. Elites, it's kind of, it's kind of dictated on your spending. If you if you if you spend a lot, and you're going to be doing a lot of summoning. It's not as big of a deal. Light and dark, you want to be particularly careful about, and then you want to be aware of your synthesis champs as well. That's also an important thing to keep an eye on because on top of just not using them for food in the altar, you have this hero synthesis where you confuse all these different champs. So you want you just want to be real careful, especially when you're brand new to a game and you don't know what champs go where and what champs are part of this food. Just be real careful about the food that you're using, okay? Stick to using uncommons, commons, stick to using your your foodies and and be, and and just let champs sit for a little bit until you get have your bearings and you know for sure that they should be used as food or not. Another one that's really important in this game is the material to upgrade your gear. If we come in here, these 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 crystals, they are hard to come by. The, I think this is one of the things that the game values the most. Like, for example, in, in Raid Shadow Legends, it seems to be sacred shards and legendary tomes that the game really values heavily. They really don't want you getting those. This this is what these kind of seem like. These you don't come by these super often, so be real careful about using them. You can you can use other material other uh art what is it, gear? <laughs> I was going to say artifacts. I was like, I don't think that's right here. You can use other gear of the same slot to power up gear. So again, still be careful about what you're using to power up gear, but try to stick to this as much as possible. Sometimes you're going to need to use these, but it's a good idea to let these pile up until you start getting some high quality gear. 
right? And then you can come in and power up the high quality gear with these things because it gets really expensive. I think Trigger Happy John said to me earlier, you can take three pieces to level 12 for less or, or equal to the cost of taking one to 15. So it's, it's very expensive uh, to, to, to fully max out gear. So be really, really careful when you're new. Take most of your gear to nine. Some of it you can take to 12 if it's a more decent piece. But again, this is another thing that you're going to want to wait a little while on and be sure that you understand your gear and what pieces are worth being leveled up completely. And just kind of let these resources stack up because these are kind of hard to come by. Next tip is one that I personally was not aware of because I don't think I've ever seen it in another game that I've played. And I've played a lot of these games. This is one of the best quality of life uh, implementations in this game or any other game I think I've ever seen. And it's up here in the bonuses tab, right? If you've bought an XP boost, if you have an XP boost from a, from a, uh, a mission or something, if you have one in your inventory, you can come in here and toggle it off and on which is just incredible. That's such good quality of life. Most games, when you pop an XP boost, you just have that window of time, and that's that's what you have to work with. I've had this 24-hour this XP boost for, I think, two or three days now, but because I can turn it off, I've still got 18 hours left on it. So be sure that you're coming in and doing that, and I'm real particular about it. So like, I'll go in. Right now it's off. I would go in. Usually I'm farming glyphs, so I'll find out what, what stage I need to farm which glyph. I'll go. I'll set up the battle. I'll turn it on from that menu, and then as soon as it's over, I'll come back here, I'll turn it off, and then I'll go upgrade my glyphs and do everything else I want to do. I try to get in the habit of every time I come out of adventure mode, I just turn it off. Because you can turn it back on from the battle screen. So, like, if we go into here, you can go into bonuses and turn it on from here. So I always turn it on from here, and then every time I finish what I'm doing in adventure, I immediately come out here and turn it off, just so that it's a habit, because it really sucks when you forget to turn it off and just waste it, right? So try to make that a habit. Every time you come out of adventure mode, just go up there and turn it off, and then get into the habit of every time you do something in adventure mode, you turn it on right before the battle, okay? That's, that's, that'll, be, that'll be huge for you. Okay, this this one's a little bit embarrassing. I'm going to I'm going to be honest, but I figure if it can happen to me, it can happen to somebody else. I spent way too long wondering where the shop was where you don't spend money. For some reason, this part of the screen just did not seem like an option to me. But if you click this dude, if you click the bartender, it brings you in here to the gold diamond and all these other shops. I I didn't know. <laughs> I was like, where is the other shop? <laughs> For a little bit. Um, so if you're a brand new player and maybe you're wondering where that shop is, it's the bartender. And it'll refresh periodically. And when it does, he'll have three dots next to his name. And I think that's how I finally saw him was he had three dots. And I was like, oh, this guy's got something to say. And I clicked him and he came in here. And then speaking of coming in here, uh, most of the time, all the stuff in here for the gold, I will buy. There's, there's glyphs in here. There's jelly in here. Sometimes there's um, pumpkins and gear charms in here. And then sometimes there's really good gear. I've gotten quite a few pieces of nice six-star gear in here. So check this regularly. And generally, generally speaking, I tend to cop everything that's not a piece of gear. And then I look at all the gear because sometimes, like I said, there's some decent gear in here. And then maybe we'll do another dedicated video about like the shop and what kinds of purchases to be purchases to be making from the... From, from, I should be calling it the market because the shop is something else. And that was what was confusing me partially, but the market is over here on the bartender. So if you're brand new and you were looking for it, there it is. I had to throw it in. All right, this tip I actually just saw in a Kyra Mobile video. Big shout out to Kyra Mobile if uh, if you don't if you don't know who Kyra Mobile is for some reason. Uh, he'll be linked below. You should go you should go subscribe to him and check him out. He makes great content. Great dude. Um, let me let me get into a battle somewhere. This one will be fun. This is a pretty cool little tip that I didn't that I didn't know, uh, and and I'll piggyback it onto another tip actually. So we'll turn off auto real quick. Now, if you hold your mouse over someone, you can see their exact health. I didn't know that. I thought you had to kind of guess with the health bar. But if you generally know what kind of damage output you're working with, you can you can work with this a little bit, and it works on your champions too. Uh, and and it's just a hold click. So if you're on your phone, I reckon you just hold your thumb over the character you want to see. Obviously, if you're using blue stacks or something. Uh, you can mouse over them and click. If if you want to play this on your computer, by the way, quick quick plug, um, and you and you fix my green screen real quick. Uh, if if you want to play this on on your computer and you're not yet, I'll also link my Blue Stacks link below. If you want to download this and play it on PC, the link will be there. I'll get a little bit of a kickback for it. If you wanted to support the channel, 
Uh, that would be dope, but certainly not mandatory. Uh, anyway, that's a pretty cool little tip, right? Now, that's one. We'll piggyback two more tips on this one, actually. Uh, one is on auto, you've got these portraits down here, and the check mark means they're just going to do what they do. You can click someone's picture and turn off all their other abilities. So now she'll only A1. She'll use uh, spells, obviously, but then she'll only A1. It turns off everything else she has going on. So if for some, if, if you wanted to kind of halfway be involved in what they're doing in battle, like maybe you didn't want someone to use an ultimate until they got to a boss, you could turn that off, and then when they get to the boss, you could turn it back on. Or maybe you've got someone in because you just want their A1. Maybe someone's got a good A1 attack down, and you want to just make sure they keep that up, and you don't care about their other skills, something of that nature. That's how you can do that. It's very easy. And then the last tip that I'll piggyback on this one we will have to do in the next fight, I reckon. No, I can pause here and do it. Or not. <laughs> okay, we'll start another battle. Um, is... Let's get back into battle. The info tab in the top will give you some good information about what's going on in the fight. So this eye right here. You can click it. It shows all the champs, it shows their health, it shows all their skills, it shows their cooldowns, which is really nice. It's really nice to not have to mentally try to keep up with cooldowns. One, because that's just very taxing, and two, because it's a, it takes a lot of time to, to just learn all the champs' names, but then to learn all their skills, and then to learn all their cooldowns. You're talking months and months of being heavily invested in these games. So it's nice that this information is here for you, and you can come in and plan accordingly. So, like, we know that this is this is on a two-turn cooldown starting out, right? So we know that they'll probably do this, right? They'll, they'll probably usually use the strongest skill they have available. Is that a passive? That's a passive. So they're all going to A1, but then they're going to have their ability, so you can plan accordingly. Uh, it, it's pretty handy. And then if anybody has buffs and debuffs, let's see if anybody catches any buffs, debuffs real quick. And we can, uh, we can, we can go in there and take a look at that. This is a good way to learn about the different buffs and debuffs in the game too, in battle. When you, all right, that, that's a, that's a good example right there. So the, like everybody has defense down and you can come in and click and see exactly what it's doing. She has vengeful spirit. It gives her more attack and it's stackable. And we know that her passive works with the vengeful spirit thing. So that would be important to note for you and for enemies, right? If it's stacking up high, you want to be aware of it. And then this dude has two debuffs, and this one is increased damage taken, which is, if you come from raid, it's basically a weaken, right? So that's a defense down and weaken. So now we know this guy has an ultimate available, right? We can come in here and get all kinds of information about the battle and plan accordingly. And if you're not playing on auto and you're doing it turn by turn, you can take your time and come in here and learn these things and start to develop some familiarity with with everything that's going on in each battle, right? So that's a really nice tip. I think, I think as a newer player especially, you should be using this tab a lot. There's a lot to be learned just from these tabs, right? So uh, make it a habit to come in here and check out what's going on. All right, next tip. Check your events tab regularly. They, they do a really good job with this event calendar of letting you know what's coming a pretty good ways in advance, right? So you can come in here and plan. For example, we know, we know that a gear enhancement event is going to be starting in an hour. So if I had gear that I wanted to enhance, if I was going to be building a new champ or moving some gear around doing things, I should wait an hour because I might as well come in here and get rewards for the thing that I'm going to be doing anyway, right? Whereas like the arena event, you're going to be doing arena every day anyway, starts in three days. I wouldn't wait three days to do most things, right? Generally, these events so far are not that hard to complete anyway, um, but it's a good idea to come in here and get a, get familiar with what's coming, right? Maybe you could postpone some gear enhancement for a day or something and come in here and get the bonus reward. Sometimes they do summoning, you know, they, they do different kinds of events. So just, just be aware that the event calendar is there, check it regularly, and when appropriate, plan accordingly. And then the last tip is a real quick one, but it's good to know, just to know, down here, you know that there's pity in the game if you've clicked summon details and you're guaranteed a legendary every 100 summons. A good, a good way to not have to count and keep up with that is down here. You've got chance to get a legendary hero from the next summon, and it says 1% plus 0%. When you're 70 shards in, this will start to go up by 0.5 every shard, and then when you're at 90 shards, it'll start to go up by 1% every shard. I believe that's correct. Yep. And when it's when it's 1% plus 20%, that's when you're guaranteed a Lego. So at 1% plus 20%, your next shard is a Lego, okay? Also understand that, that advanced summons, that's all that applies to. So the limited summons, I believe, have their own pity. 
If I'm wrong, someone correct me on that, but I believe limited summons have their own individual pity, and then I think advanced summons have their own pity, and then when they do summons event, summon events, those tabs have their own pity. So as far as I know, you can't save your pity and then wait on an event like the Geralt event, right? I think the like, events like the Geralt event have their own pity, whereas the event like the Boolean event, where this tab actually changed to 300% Boolean, I do think that pity applies, right? Boolean didn't get her own tab. Boolean changed this tab, whereas Geralt got his own tab, okay? So when it's plus 20%, you're guaranteed a Lego, and if there's a different tab, just, just be aware. Whatever you're doing, check your pity, right? Whatever tab you're on, just check your pity, and when it's plus 20, you're guaranteed a Lego, okay? Uh, just some quick things to note about the summoning summoning stuff and that's it that's 10 things that hopefully hopefully something in there did someone some good i don't necessarily expect every single one of them to help every single person that watches this video but maybe one of them in the list uh you know told you something you didn't know about the game maybe you come away feeling a little bit more comfortable with something uh if you did like the video that'd be dope for me that's going to help it push we're trying to we're trying to blow this channel up man i want to i want to come over here and get get plugged in heavily to this community uh loving the game subscribe if you like what i'm doing and you want to see more of it other than that, man, I'm going to get out of here. If you have any more tips that I didn't touch on in this video that you want to drop in the comments, I'm always a big fan of that. I really appreciate it when you guys help each other out down there. Um, so that's it. I'm going to get out of here. Have a good one, guys.